I'm Emil Niazi sitting in for Elamin Abdel Mahmoud. This is Commotion. While well, we made it to Friday, God bless, and it's time for the group chat. We're going to dig into all of the big pop culture stories that everyone's talking about this week, including a huge Netflix hit that you can't even watch yet in Canada. Here with me today are Rachel Ho, Terry Hart, and Matt Hart. No relation, right? <laughs> not, that, not that I'm aware of. No. Okay, that's good. We should do a family tree sometime. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get into the first story. This is a movie that is kind of shaping up to be, you know, a big cinematic event, at least for parents of anxious kids. Hello, everybody. Ah! Oh my gosh, I am just such a huge fan of yours, and now here I am meeting you face to face. <laughs> okay, how can I help? Um, I can take oh! notes, get coffee, manage your calendar, walk your dog, carry your things, watch you sleep. Wow, you have a lot of energy. <laughs> Maybe you could just stay in one place? Anything. Just call my name and I'm here for you. Okay, love that. And what was your name again? Oh, I'm sorry, I can get ahead of myself. I I'm anxiety. I I'm one of Riley's new emotions, and we are just super jazzed to be here. That's a scene from Pixar's Inside Out 2. The original came out uh, almost 10 years ago, and it told the coming-of-age story of an 11-year-old girl named Riley. And Riley's emotions came to life in the movie. Joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. And well, now Riley is a teenager, which of course means she has a lot more emotions. Anxiety, envy, ennui, and embarrassment have joined the other emotions in her head. And we have all seen the film. We have lots of thoughts on it. We have lots of feelings about it. I'm excited <laughs> to get into it. So, Matt, you know, the original Inside Out obviously holds a very special place in the heart of its fans. You know, it's more memorable in many ways than some of the bigger Pixar films like Cars or The Incredibles. So what puts this sort of at the top of the pile? Well, I mean, you're, the stakes are clearly higher than just talking about like race cars. You're talking mm -hmm. about big, big concepts that kids are dealing with, like uh, emotions, and this is like evolving with them. So as the the children age, the stakes kind of go up. So it's pretty easy to see why kids get invested if it uh, with these films if it's the first thing that taught them about how to handle grief after their grandparents passed or something like that. That's probably something that you, uh, you know, s sticks with you forever. And the, one of the things that when I was going into these, you know, I, I always heard this narrative that people always like, Oh, kids now are too soft and all they do is tug with their feelings and stuff. And the older I got, the more I realized that the guys saying that would be like the guys who would just like, drink in the dark after work and then explode every six months. So I was like, yeah, I don't think that's much healthier than like talking it out, man. Like maybe you should work on that. <laughs> well, that we could do a whole other show about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Rachel, did, did this sequel live up to your expectations? That's a hard question to answer because I don't think my expectations were very high. To right. be honest, I didn't think that this movie needed a sequel. Like I watched it 10 or nine years ago and I thought this is an incredible film. Mm -hmm. It was really unique for the time when when it came out, but I didn't really see that it would ever be made into a sequel, let alone like a franchise, which I think it is going to become one now. Mm -hmm. But I did enjoy how they moved it forward to puberty. Like last time we saw Riley, she's a little kid. So natural progression is she's 13 now going through a whole lot. Puberty is never fun. It never looks good. It never feels good. So I think it's really great. And they pushed the animation forward too, which I thought was a really, really cool thing in this one that they didn't just stick with the, you know, the kind of the normal 3D that we see. I think the only thing I could take away from it is saying the conclusion is the exact same as the first one, though, mm -hmm. is that the idea that we have multiple emotions and that's OK. That's kind of what makes a person. It's not a bad message to reiterate once again. And I don't to be honest, I don't really know what other conclusion you could draw from a mm -hmm. film like this. Um, but I did find I thought, oh, they kind of did the same thing as they did last time. Right. Now, Terry, this is a 13 year old girl. And she did have a lot of very relatable emotions, but it felt very chaste. It felt a bit sanitized. What, what did you think of the movie? Yeah, I mean, there was no horny emotion. Right. Um, which I think we're a talking lot about of a 13 year old girl. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of teenagers have. Um, but this is Pixar, uh, which is owned by Disney. And I think that that brand they take very seriously in terms of being family friendly, mm -hmm. as family friendly as possible. So we see that in Inside Out 2. I cried. 
uh, like not sniffling, crying, just, you know, I, I, I got the emotions. It got me in the feels. It, um, I think that this is even more than the original, more of a movie for the parents though, mm-hmm. of a reminder that your kids are going to change. Your kids are not just going to be the people who wake up every morning and be like, yay, let's have a day. And that you can change their emotion with a popsicle. I'm not a parent. I don't think it's that easy. <laughs> don't come at me. But, <laughs> but things get more complicated, not just for kids, but also for the role of parents. And we see a little bit of that in Inside Out 2 with Riley's parents trying to cope with her new emotions and the movie itself is quite complicated i mean the new emotions are complicated like ennui is a is an interesting choice for an emotion <laughs> in there i thought um but it 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 really does um you know the movie culminates in riley having and i, I think we don't have to worry too much about spoilers here, but the movie culminates um, in Riley having a full-on panic attack. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, depicted with kind of a tornado with anxiety at the center of it. And I thought it was really, really effective. And to me, like, yeah, Rachel, I agree. It does come up with the same conclusion, but one of the things that it reminds us of is that we can't put bad things away and only hold on to our good emotions that everything in our life makes us who we are the good and the bad and the ugly and then how does that make us a full person and i do think Mm -hmm. as complicated as it is and i think a little bit mature for some kids Mm -hmm. um that's what Pixar does, right? They push the envelope. You think back to how revolutionary Toy Story was, not to mention like WALL-E and UP, like they challenge kids and believe kids can handle complicated things at the movies. And Inside Out 2 is that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you bring and up I a lot it. of great <laughs> movies. I don't know if I would put Inside Out 2 in that canon. Um, but, you know, Terry, you mentioned crying. There was a man crying beside me at, at my screening, uh, an adult man with no children. Uh Matt, I wonder if, you know, having her be a teenager, dealing with some of these more mature feelings and, and, you know, more nuanced sort of situations, does that leave out the younger kids? Do you think that they will still attract uh, the crowd that sort of made Inside Out such an institution? Uh, I definitely was not sobbing during the movie. Just want to be on record for that (laughs) at the press screening. It's okay if you were. Yeah, yeah, I was not doing that. But um, yeah, no, it's it's great at introducing these concepts to kids. And especially because right now, um, and again with this whole like, oh, what we do is talk about our feelings uh narrative, it's like um the good thing this does is like Terry said, is it shows like a real example of anxiety spiraling out of control. And a lot of adults deal with anxiety, but I think the problem is right now is that everyone thinks that every social interaction needs to be perfect. And if it isn't, I've got social anxiety. It's like, no, life's hard sometimes. And this shows what actual anxiety could be like in the snowballing and the worst case scenario. And if that happens, this would be the worst case scenario. And if that worst case scenario happens, this, you know, like that spiral thinking. And that's a really handy tool. And I think part of the reason you saw adults crying in this like there's a lot of people still with unprocessed stuff from the pandemic you know i i i personally that's the feeling i got it was 10 a.m on a tuesday and it was all dudes who look like me and there's like a gentle like going through the movie and i was like oh man everyone's going through it a little bit but uh it, that's good that's healthy if that's what it takes a movie to get people in touch with their emotions that's great and i want to say that on we steals the show here they could have called it apathy because that's a big part of your teenage years or preteen years but um she's kind of like this galois smoking camus reading you know like existential oh yeah just so (laughs) over everything perpetually exhausted and totally steals the show she's amazing in it yeah i liked ennui too uh i did feel like it was it never really popped up except for in her brain but uh it was a great character You know, Rachel, with the first Inside Out, we got very attached to particularly um, joy and I think sadness. You know, I think everyone loved sadness in the first movie. Uh, Did you connect with any of these characters, these new ones? Um, You know, Matt and Terry both mentioned ennui, but there's anxiety, there's envy, there's embarrassment. That was a great character. I think I'll I'll add to the ennui love as well, because I I love the way they (laughs) animated her as well, like having such a droopy neck, like she just really didn't care. It's amazing. But yeah, they they added um, a few new characters into this. And 
I think the, the characters or the emotions, I should say, that they chose to add are on point for that age range, right? Like that's the time of life where we do start feeling a bit anxious and maybe recognizing it. And the thing I found interesting too with anxiety in particular was I, when I was 13, I don't even think I knew what the word anxiety was. I like, we never talked about it. We didn't have that idea. Nowadays though, kids are really in tune with that idea that, oh, I'm feeling anxious or I'm an anxious person. We didn't, we just thought, oh, that girl's weird over there. Like, or I feel weird or whatever it is. So I think that choosing those ones, um, to me was a really great call because I think it's just it's really in touch I will also say just to kind of add what you guys are talking about in terms of um, adults and kids to me these movies have always been for adults mm -hmm. in many ways I to me Inside Out was best appreciated by an adult not a child because you are dealing with quite a you know advanced not advanced I shouldn't say complex stuff but this one, it seems to hit on the nail on the head in terms of what an actual 13-year-old is going through right now. So it's it's things that a 13-year-old can watch and really, really connect with and identify with. Um, it's interesting, you know, uh, Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling, they didn't come back uh, for this one and they were disgust and fear. And so those two characters seem to kind of take a bit of a backseat, which I think was actually probably a better call because it was sounded a bit off, in my opinion, knowing that they weren't in this film. Uh, but I, I thought Maya Hawk did such a great job as anxiety. And I think embarrassment, you said that it, she's he's so cute. Mm -hmm. He is going to be <laughs> The like the stuffed animal, the merchandise. If they don't keep pushing that one, I don't know what <laughs> Disney is doing because that was the most adorable character that they had. <laughs> now, Terry, this is you know a big movie for Pixar. They really kind of need this to hit. It's been a few bombs. You know, Lightyear didn't do well, but we did have some critically acclaimed movies like Turning Red. But there's a lot of chatter about you know what is the future of Pixar and you know can they sort of have the dominance that they used to have with some of the big hits that you mentioned. Uh, what's at stake with the release of uh, Inside Out 2? Um, I think a lot of people are looking at this movie, not just from a Pixar point of view, but also from a movie theater experience point of view. I mean, we were talking a lot about how people aren't going to the theaters right now. So this is a movie that, you know, they're hoping that families will go and see not just for Pixar, but also, as I mentioned, for the theatrical uh, box office dollars and that whole aspect of our business. And I think that what, you know, Pixar was looked at as this kind of holy grail of Teflon movies that couldn't be touched. They put something out and it was going to be, you know, five stars, thumbs up, all critically acclaimed, and everybody was going to go in droves and it was going to change lives. I mean, that's kind of how big we looked at these movies. Some of them that I mentioned before from Toy Story, WALL-E, Up, uh, Monsters, Inc. And I think that they got away from that formula for a while because these scripts take a really long time to write. They sit and they pour over these scripts so that they are really, really as emotionally resonant as they can be. And I think think what um, Inside Out 2 is feeling like to me is kind of not just a sequel to Inside Out, but also a mashup between Elemental and Turning Red. I think that those other two movies got us out, got us to Inside Out 2 um, from a script. And I think that that's okay. I think that that is, I think they're also Pixar is trying to figure out with Mummy Ship Disney what is right between a theatrical release and something that goes directly onto their streaming service, Disney Plus. I think they made a big mistake with Turning Red. And if they could go back and do that again, they would. It was like a pandemic time decision. But there is a lot riding on this. That being said, Pixar's going to be around for a long, long time, and they deserve to be. They continue to put out movies that are deserving of this kind of a conversation because they are doing things differently and trying to kind of enlighten the emotional experience of being a human being from a kid's point of view and from an adult's point of view. And more times than not, they get it right. Well, we'll see if they get it right, and we'll see how audiences react to Inside Out 2.